Since the spring of 2017, waterfront owners and businesses on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River have been struggling to manage the destruction of shorelines, property, and land from record levels of high water. And they're all asking the same question. Why is the water so high? Records on water levels for the past 50 years indicate that the folks who regulate those levels have done a pretty good job managing within an approximate four-foot variance until the spring of 2017. Plan 2014 went into effect in the fall of 2016, and in the spring of 17, an all-time high water level was recorded on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River until this past spring, when water levels even exceeded the record high marks of 2017. Those who grew up, reside, or operate businesses on the edge of those water systems have been told, don't build any infrastructure on the water side of the 100-year high water mark. Those rules have worked well for over 50 years until the implementation of Plan 2014. That four-foot variance mentioned earlier is now closer to a seven-foot variance, well beyond the 100-year high water mark. And that is not the worst of it. When unusually high precipitation creates soaring upper Great Lake water levels, and the water is not allowed to pass through our area, the result is even more water coming into and staying in the system for a longer period of time. The good news is that the IJC has a control mechanism in the Cornwall Moses Saunders Dam. And if they commit to leave outflows at historically high outflow rates, it will reduce the excess amount of water, approximately 12 inches, that has been stored in the system since Plan 2014 was implemented. One foot of water doesn't sound that threatening, but the imagery in this video proves that it is. If the water levels have been reduced by 12 inches over the past three years, it would have been the difference between a high water year and the existing loss of homes, land and businesses and millions of dollars of damage. And for what purpose? The list of stakeholders that have been negatively affected is long. Home, cottage and landowners, marinas, tourism providers, Great Lakes shipping, national and provincial parks, launch ramps, and the loss of small business activity due to the tourists and visitors that couldn't spend time and money on the waterways this year. Our ask is simple. Lawmakers in the IJC must commit to return to Plan 58DD that worked well for 50 years and repeal Plan 2014. Without immediate action by the IJC, the question we'll all be asking in the spring of 2020 is why didn't lawmakers in the IJC do something when they had the chance?